Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon. And uh, I guess this presentation is between now and lunch. So I'm going to. Is uh, Elizabeth Samarón and Claudia Vela. Would you like to introduce yourself, Claudia? <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Claudia Vela. I'm instructional designer at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Elizabeth Samarón, also yeah. an instructional designer for the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley um, in Brownsville, Texas. Thank you for joining us. All right, so we're gonna try to make some arrangements here so they can uh, see them in the, on the screen. Um, so I guess uh, uh, I just wanna give you the welcome again, and, and of course going over the, uh, the presentation today. Uh, just the purpose of the presentation is to uh, just share with you the importance of uh, professional development as a tool for improving student achievements, and of course, teaching effectiveness by providing opportunities uh, for faculty to build common understandings and expand their knowledge and skills to teach online and of course face-to-face. Uh, -face. So some of the takeaways for this presentation of course is going over the challenges that we have of we translate uh, um, challenges in opportunities presented by COVID-19. What are the initiatives that uh, we launched uh, to I guess take care of this uh, of this challenge. Some of the lessons learned through this project, through this initiative. What are some of the faculty perceptions, and of course, what's next? Um, again, um, I guess before we go into into the details, I just want to share some uh, brief information about who we are and uh, what sort of characteristics population where we're located and all those things. So, just real quick, uh, it will take just a couple of minutes. Uh, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, we're in the southernmost part of Texas, border with Mexico, on the border by the sea. Notice that there is a distributed campus. We have campuses all over the Rio Grande Valley, all the way from Rio Grande City to South Padre Island. Yeah, we have an island too. Uh, and of course, um, population in terms of students this past fall, fall 2021, almost 32,000 students. And 90% of those students are Hispanics, obvious reasons, right? Getting close to the uh, having close to the border, to the border, um, and and of course uh, some of the some of them, uh, fifty four percent of them are uh, first generation. Now we look into the right side. That's the online learning stats, right? This fall twenty twenty one stats, uh, and you heard me that saying after vaccination, not necessarily after pandemic, because we still have some cases, um, second wave, third wave of cases, at least in Texas. Um, and 742 hybrid courses, almost 2,000 course sections being offered online, and 60,000 students taking at least one online course. That means about 50% of our population, more than 50% of our population, student population are taking at least one online. Now, we compare that with fall 2020, of course, everybody was online, right? So it was um, about 4,000 sections being offered online. Uh, even before before the pandemic, it was about only 700 courses being offered online. So big numbers there. Um, but besides quantity, we focus about quality. Um, we're like I said in the in the presentation the uh, in the panel this morning, uh, we're a quality matters affiliated institution. So all of faculty teaching online, teaching hybrid are quality matters certified. Um, there's other trainings that faculty have been trained or have been uh, taken uh, through Quality Matters. Other professional developments that we uh, produce in house. Uh, we got the blueprinting process, which is for a one winner uh, process to prepare faculty to teach online. Um, and again, no matter what delivery mode we have at the university, the commitment is to, have, to, to provide. Um, High quality uh, teaching, um, and, and of course, uh, um, bringing those uh, great experience to the to the students. This is what we call the the wall of fame. Some of the uh, online programs that we offer online, 
Uh, as you can see, most of them are on the on the graduate level, but we also have some in, uh, into the undergraduate. Although most of the students taking online courses and taking at least one are um, all right so then we move into the uh teaching for students engagement in the hybrid classroom and of course this is a uh, professional development that the university provide uh, for faculty this fall 2021 and, and of course, the purpose of this faculty, I mean, this training was to prepare faculty uh, to teach hybrid and to teach face-to-face -face and, and online, right? Um, and I mentioned this morning, whatever the hybrid definition is. Uh, but a little bit of context, a little bit of history. Um, I mean, we had some policies in place, some procedures to, uh, for faculty to teach online, but then we know what happened in March, 2020, right? COVID was declared a pandemic. And of course, everybody has to move in an emergency remote. So we have to train some faculty within two weeks just to teach, uh, to teach remote. Not necessarily online, but at least remote. Uh, then we have summer to prepare faculty for authentic online instructions. Uh, so quality uh, online instruction. So fall 2020, spring 2021, we were 100% online at the university. Um, Again, students being students and missing that engagement with other students and some faculty missing that engagement with the students. Um, and of course, having in mind that fall 2021, we were supposed to go back to normal, whatever the new normal is. Um, we came up with uh, some trainings, uh, some professional developments for faculty after we had some uh, or several meetings with different uh, stakeholders, different uh, departments at the university including student success, IT, Center for Teaching and Excellence, Center for Online Learning. So we join offer, uh, efforts here and of course uh, bring these uh, new professional development that we're going to talk about today. So we, we prepared 200, uh, almost 100 faculty members um, in, during this process and it was during the summer 2021. Um, again, the purpose of this, this presentation is to go over um, the uh, the, the process, expectations, um, what is it that the, the faculty learned and how they uh, uh, took this information and how they applied, they, they applied this information, of course, um, how, what they, the students learned from this, uh, from this new uh, way of teaching. I guess at now, for now, I'm gonna stop talking and pass the microphone to uh, Elizabeth Samaron to see if um, they will provide more information about uh, participant expectations and the rest of the faculty professional development. Please. Thank you, Francisco. Um, as Francisco mentioned, uh, this was a professional development that, we, that took place from June 2021 to August, where there were four different uh, professional development sessions on student engagement. Our department created an organization in Blackboard, our management system. This organization included a description, learning objectives, messages from our director, Francisco Garcia, the director from Center for Teaching Excellence, Alisa Cavazos, and participant expectations. In Blackboard, there was also an area for presenters to post resources and an area for participants to post their student engagement activity and reflections about their hybrid course. About 30, mem 30 faculty members from all types of disciplines attended these sessions. The participants were expected to attend all week, reflect on a topic each day using a graphic organizer that included different reflection questions and drafting and a student engagement activity. They share uh, this activity in a group to receive feedback 
from peers and a group of student consultants. They also had to submit this engagement activity in a reflection in the Blackboard organization. Next one, please. Thank you, Francisco. Now, uh, as I mentioned, there were daily conversations from different groups of faculties, and these conversations were intended to inspire reflection and collaboration on best teaching and learning practices to engage students in courses that were mainly hybrid. The ultimate intention of this group conversation was to create a space where faculty, faculty could talk with colleagues as they collectively design an equity concept, conscious teaching and learning environment in their hybrid course. This course contained uh, several different learning objectives, formative feedback on learning, aligned assessments, and empowered active learning activities and strategies. Some of the objectives for the one week professional development series were to define hybrid teaching and reflect on goals and intentions for the hybrid classroom design. Also to identify learning objectives in hybrid and face-to-face -face spaces and reflect on equity conscious teaching and learning practice. Faculty was also to write a feedback and assessments philosophy statement and create a plan for collecting student feedback on teaching and learning. Learning about best practices for student engagement in hybrid classroom and at the same time, uh, draft a student engagement activity for which uh, were there, uh, they were to share this activity and provide feedback to each other, including best practices for equity conscious learning objectives, reciprocal feedback strategies, and active learning student engagement practices. Claudia? Thank you, Liz. Um, uh, one question we had in mind when we designed this training was uh, how can faculty create meaningful and equitable student engagement practices in the hybrid classroom that empower all the students? So considering that the future of higher education is increasingly hybrid and there are multiple modes of blended learning and having in mind that all courses, um, despite of how we're teaching face-to-face, -face, online, hybrid, and they all must be delivered the same way, as, as, so students are not disadvantaged by the type of instruction. This professional development gave participants the opportunity to engage with ideas and conversations, not only about active learning or um, student engagement strategies, but also about how systemic inequities uh, impact the student success in our classrooms. So how faculty pos position in the classroom can create opportunities, but also obstacles for students learning and how professional development is a col um, collaborative process that challenges us um, to analyze our teaching from different perspectives. So in summary, this, this was to reflect on how we can remove um, the barriers that limit success for all students. Uh, we also address the need to integrate universal design for learning principles in our classroom, considering um, inclusivity, accessibility, representation, feedback, and engagement. Can we go to the next, um, next slide? Thank you. Uh, as Francisco mentioned earlier, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all the workshops were run uh, on Zoom and Blackboard. Instructional designers, uh, one IT media system technician, and faculty from the Colleges of Liberal Arts and College of Education uh, facilitated the conversations throughout the week. 
So, uh, for example, Elizabeth and I facilitated the first session on different hybrid models, including Hyplex, and provided info information on class structure and activities, technology, um, and other resources for teaching hybrid. On the second day, the session was about um, creating learning objectives, objective, objectives and conversations on equity conscious teaching. There was a session on feedback and assessment practices um, and best practices for student engagement. And on day five, students serving as pedagogical consultants provided feedback to participating faculty. This initiative, um, which, is called, which is called SALT, um, means students as learners and teachers, and is led by the Center for Teaching Excellence. And um, it aims to promote student success by, by encouraging, encouraging teaching and learning partnerships between students and faculty, uh, faculty members across all disciplines. So in summary, this one week workshop offer faculty an opportunity to reflect on how they would introduce the engagement activity to students within the context of their hybrid approach, and how they will use the technology tools in the classroom to engage both face-to-face -face and online students, but also to think about how they could align a student activity to the learning objectives um, of the course through, through an equity, equity conscious lens to impact the student success in the classroom. Liz, um, you're muted, please. You're still muted. Okay, new technologies for presenting materials were introduced to faculty outside of Blackboard, which is the core of the technologies of our university. Facilitators use technologies such as Google Jamboard, Nearpad, and Miro to promote virtual collaboration, connect thoughts, and share ideas. Technology Technology use supported didactic use of instruction where facilitators prepare lectures using slideshows, written materials, and resources that offer opportunities for interaction among the faculty. This gave faculty an opportunity to rethink how technology might help improve their hybrid class and create or redesign a student engagement activity using new technology. Next slide, please. Now, the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley as the second largest Hispanic serving institution has a mission, uh, has a mission to produce culturally responsive and reflective educators through, prof through professional development. This professional development emphasizes practice-based teaching education, reflective inquiry, technology integration, 21st century skills, and culturally and linguistically sustaining pedagogies. This series of training on teaching for student engagement in the hybrid classroom supported faculty efforts, faculty efforts to design hybrid courses. I'm hearing an echo, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Develop curriculum and teaching in ways that build upon UTRGD's mission. The Center for Online Learning and Teaching Technologies stresses the importance of accessibility in e-learning to provide students with equal opportunities. I must say that all of us instructional designers are cert certified in accessibility by WebAid. Claudia? Yes, thank you, Liz. If we can go to the next slide, please. 
Thank you. These are a few of our highlights uh, for this professional development. A faculty experience five days devoted to the art and science of teaching with educators from all disciplines. Uh, this was an opportunity to learn from colleagues outside their field of study and reflect on their own teaching practices. And because participants received feedback from students, Working as pedagogical consultants, this brought the students' perspective into the conversation, which uh, was very useful and interesting to faculty. And participants um, not only learned from experienced uh, presenters, but also cared about the challenges so their colleagues faced and their solutions. So they had plenty of time to network with colleagues during the training. Uh, we also try to offer from the latest technology to the latest research and tools in online and hybrid teaching. So the workshop tried to bring participants the, the best new thinking. And um, we also provided best practices for student engagement and implemented new technology as Elizabeth mentioned before. So if we can go to the next um, slide. So to use the high, hybrid or high flex approach well uh, requires a lot of things to fall into place, uh, including faculty by in student engagement, course design, instructional support, uh, technology investments, just to name a few. So after the first session, based on participants feedback on the training, we incorporated practical examples of activities that faculty could put to work from the first day of classes. Their feedback helped us evaluate the effectiveness of, of our first training uh, for future sessions, make improvements and plan for future se sessions. So something important that we got from faculty feedback is that they look for professional development that is practical. So all facilitators improve their session based on faculty perceptions of the training. Um, we know that in professional development, teachers want to learn from other teachers. And this was not the, the exception. This professional development showed us that faculty identified their peers as a valuable source of professional development. And um, as a result of all these workshops and faculty needs and recommendations, our department called created a website with learning resources for face-to-face -face and hybrid teaching. Uh, we included resources to address um, COVID-related stresses, including options for social distancing, hybrid or remote settings. Um, if you like more information on the Center for Teaching Excellence SALT initiative, Teaching for Inclusivity, Diversity and Equity, or CALT information on accessibility or hybrid teaching for the face-to-face -face and online classrooms, uh, we have a few websites listed under resources in this presentation. So if we go to uh, one of our last slides, what can we do to improve professional development? And this is what we took away from faculty feedback that is helping us plan for future se sessions. So we learned that technologies introduced for presented mat materials had a positive impact on participants' decision to implement them in the classroom. And also the real-time use of technology tools such as Miro, Nearpod, and Jamboard uh, provided fa faculty the adequate time to learn, but also to implement and reflect upon new practices that facilitate changes in their practice. Um, also participants mentioned that they valued learning best practices for formative and summative feedback in hybrid teaching and learning. A collaboration, feedback, and reflection uh, supported participants' professional development experience. And expert faculty as facilitators uh, support faculty learning in their areas of expertise. So it's important for professional developers not only to identify faculty, but to develop faculty as mentors and coaches. 
So um, this concludes our presentation. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We have a few minutes left for questions, I think. Is there anything else uh, that you, Francisco, or Liz would like to add? Not from my side, Liz. Anything you would like to add? I would like to add, uh, we're open to questions like Claudia mentioned. So we can also answer uh, in Spanish. So you're, uh, make sure to ask Ask us questions, please. Preguntas, questions. Uh, uh, <coughs> did you guys ad adopt any particular framework for the culturally responsive uh, teaching? Claudia, do you hear that? Yes. Um, well, this was this this was an equity uh, conscious teaching. Uh, we ad we adopted different um, filters that faculty members could use um, when developing learning objectives and activities for their students. So, and all and those filters included um, included, for example, uh, um, frameworks or theories on uh, inclusivity, diversity, uh, student engagement. Um, feedback. And related to that, uh, I noticed that you, you had your participants create a statement on their uh, feedback and assessment philosophy. Have you noticed like a shift in the way they, they uh, construct those philosophies or uh, to, towards being something more equitable and more diverse and more inclusive? after going through the program and after implementing, especially in assessment, since assessment practices usually in academia are not that inclusive or equitable? We were able to tell uh, by the reflections that we had uh, throughout the sessions, and also because at the end, faculty had to submit uh, a student engagement activity where they had to reflect on all these filters that I was talking about before and how they were they were going to be um, able to integrate them into their into their teaching. Uh, we're still working uh, or we're working on on uh, sending a survey to to faculty who who attended this session last last summer and see how this developed how this actually developed in the classroom. Any other questions from the audience? And can we see the, if there's any questions from online? Yes, uh, we have we have a um, question. Thank you for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Any additional tips on activating professors as peer mentors in professional development? or key steps or priorities in planning, reflections, and assessments collected from students and professors. Um, one I of the I things, yes. Go, go, ahead, go ahead, Claudia. Well, no, um, just um, to answer number one, activating professors as peer mentors and professional developments. First, um, in our department, and I know the Center for Teaching Excellence is something that they do as well, is to identify uh, faculty that are very involved in um, the use of technology in online, well, in, in our case, right, from, from our perspective or experience, in the use of technology in online or hybrid courses. But also we've uh, noticed that it's important not only to identify um, this faculty, but also to um, give them trainings to be able to also understand or, or be able to work more towards the mission of the university. Uh, for example, uh, we use Quality Matters um, and we use this rubric to review our courses. So that is also the type of training that we try to, to uh, provide faculty who are working with us as, as mentors for other faculty. 
but this is something that we have um, uh, work that, that we've been working on. Something that I would like to add to it is um, even pre-pandemic, um, I mean, we have different methods to get a hold of faculty and invite them to be part of our professional development, including stipends, of course. Uh, we feed them, of course. And, uh, but other thing is that, uh, I mean, faculty would like to learn from other faculty. So that's how we in, involve um, faculty who have been experienced in teaching online, teaching hybrid. So they can, uh, I guess, uh, share, share those experience with, uh, with novice faculty in the field, uh, in the education, in the online education or the hybrid. Um, and this uh, created some kind of a, a community of engagement among faculty. So that helped a lot. Um, and of course, like I said, the stipend and other things will also, will also help. But the, uh, I mean, creating this community is what, the, uh, what helped us a lot in, in bringing those uh, faculty on board. <laughs> what were the main team challenges? Challenges, do you want to talk about that, Claudia, or me? I'm assuming challenges uh, through the uh, through the process, right? Through the professional development. You're muted. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we had some challenges. Everyone who who is who works in the professional development field know that it brings a lot of challenges um, to it. So, but right after the first session, and thanks to to the survey that we sent participants, we were able to. Uh, modify certain things in the trainings. So I, I think that after the first session, um, everything ran uh, more smoothly. So it's always very important to evaluate participants to be able to improve, improve our sessions, right? And it was also a good experience to us because it could be disappointed. Um, sometimes uh, reading from comments uh, from faculty about their expectations of the training. Um, but, you know, it also helped us because it, it, it helped us improve our trainings for future sessions. So that was one of the challenges for us. And also because um, in these times, needs were changing a lot. And this is why, as a result of all these workshops, we, we created that website that we have. Uh, it's located on our CALT website, uh, which includes a lot of um, re re resources for teaching hybrid in, during the pandemic, right? So that was also a challenge um, also for us to to be able to tell what, what faculty expectations were, what their needs were, and just be able to put everything together into something that is useful to them. Another challenge that I would say, um, this is Elizabeth, by the way, I would say it was mainly uh, the faculty had a lot of questions. They were administrative. We got to a point where we had to meet, bring administrators to answer these questions. They had questions about what rules to Im implement in the classroom. So that was a challenge because we didn't know all the answers. So what their department were telling them or they had to follow. So uh, I, I think that was also one of the challenges that we faced during these trainings. And then not only that we didn't know the challenges, it was that, I mean, those, those processes or, or, or even uh, policies is that those were changing as we were just preparing faculty to, train, uh, to teach online or hybrid. So it was, it was, 
even kind of a, a challenge for me as a director and even for my uh, VPs uh, to get answered all to those questions because it might be that today will be one answer, but tomorrow that answer will change into a into a different a different I guess different way, different direction. So yeah, that was another another challenge. Yes, question. Yeah, uh, I have a question. I may lose that part. Uh, how do you define in your term by hybrid? Uh, yeah. And after that definition, my question is uh, offering hybrid uh, is more, uh, maybe uh, of the last two years is the need uh, because of the situation. But can it be also down the road as a kind of a incentive? to get students more willing to get on to the learning, uh, learning path, uh, the education journey, yeah. because the flexibility is always. So two, two levels two questions. Question. Question. How do you define hybrid? Yeah. The second is the benefit of it. Yeah. Well, you're from, you're from Texas, right? So you, right. Know, you know we have the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board yes. that provides some definitions, yes. but those definitions are from 20 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but basically, it's, it's in terms of percentage of uh, the actual learning process. More than 50% uh, of the learning process being online, that's considered a hybrid. Now, if you go all, all the way from 51 to 85%, still a hybrid. But now it's considered, for the coordinating board, it's considered online after the 85%. So I guess... We have to ad ad adhere to those um, definitions, but at the same time, we have to create our own. Of course, there is SACS, other accrediting agencies that we need to follow. Thank God, has uh, SACS give us a, a uh, I guess, a, a, a open uh, decision in terms of uh, how we define uh, hybrid during the pandemic, of course. Now that that process already ended. So we need to go back to whatever they have as a definition. Um, so it, like I said, it was one day hybrid means one thing, the following day hybrid means another thing. And, and, and of course, um, we need to be like in constant communication with the faculty. Um, now in terms of the second question. The second question is um, the, the offering of hybrid, uh, how that affects students individual level the interest engagement in the learning and also at program level the enrollment uh, impact yeah um we have a, a high rate of uh, 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 uh hybrid courses i mean before pandemic um we used to have only like 100 120 courses hybrid after pandemic it's almost 700 uh and that continues now, in terms of uh, student success, another thing, I don't have any data on that. I know student success, keep those data or keep that data. Um, but it's been more and more popular nowadays. Uh, of course, um, taking advantage of all that experience from faculty uh, that they learned because of the pandemic, in terms of using technology and other things, is also bringing, um, I guess, bringing uh, what the students want, which is having more, um, more technology uh, apply into the classes. Um, so that's, that's, it's helping us uh, 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 in terms of uh, meeting the, the needs of the students, or at least some of the students that wanted to have more technology in the class. I mean, in the past, there was faculty who never used anything, not even PowerPoint um, in the classroom nowadays. Um, they've been training Blackboard and other technologies that now they're using it in a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So um, that's what the students are asking for. So that's that's happy in a way. Thank you. Any other questions? I know you you are thinking about lunch right now, but uh, <laughs> so, I... so so this. Does that mean then that the um the they you're gathering data and you're quantifying it in order to perhaps do some correlations between um the expect with the faculty and their their experiences and their 
a need and then correlate that with enrollment and student satisfaction and is that happening behind the scenes yes. it's happening behind the scenes i mean we're the center for online learning we uh, support faculty we support students but we get the guidance from student success from academic affairs and others who um, provide those uh, surveys uh, uh, evaluate that data and all that so they give us some uh, feedback in terms of what is needed uh, and of course they are always your uh, expertise right in terms of uh, online technologies and all of that and, i mean we work with them on a daily basis so mm -hmm. yeah but that's yeah that that is happening uh in another level yeah in a higher level mm -hmm. uh, or different different departments thank you yeah. All right. Oh, on on that level of the last question, is the faculty giving any feedback on how the curriculums are being looked at in this hybrid distance yeah. education platform? Yeah, faculty senate. Faculty senate is very active at the okay. I guess we can edit this part uh, on the recording. But yeah, they're they're always they're always participating. Uh, there is, in fact, a faculty senate subgroup that uh, uh, it's it's in charge of uh, technologies and uh, innovation and other things. So there's always participation from faculty. But the curriculum is is the faculty speaking about how the curriculum should be changing or how it's going to be impacted on? Yes, that's on the faculty side. Yes. Okay. All right. If there's no more questions, I understand there is a QR code for the presentation. 